Welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I'm so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. So in today's video, yes, I am bringing you some Easter crafts, some Easter DIYs, just some fun crafts to decorate your home with, some fun crafts that you can do with your grandchildren or your friends. Is I, I don't know, I find crafting very relaxing very de-stressing and who doesn't need that so yep so this is what today's video is all about i'm just sharing with you some simple crafts for easter so i know this one does not look like a simple craft but it really it is um so these are just chocolate molds that you can buy and i actually purchased mine from amazon i'm sure that the hobby stores probably have them also so all i'm doing right now is i am cutting it in half and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut, just leaving probably, I want to say, a quarter inch, a half inch little rim around the bunny. But when it comes to the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut that off. I'm going to leave that space open. So now that we have those cut out, now, yep, we're going to need a whole bunch of uh, binder clips. And I got these at the dollar and the quarter store. So now we're going to put those two pieces to make one. So now we're going to fill these using a plaster of Paris. That's so what the binder clips are for is to hold it nice and tight. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up. I just have a smaller little Dixie cup. So it's a two one ratio. So two parts dry ingredients to one part water. getting that first helping mixed up I was like ah, I think I'm gonna need a double helping so it was actually four four parts to two of the water that way I knew that I would have enough so I, yep I just started off by pouring it in if you're too wet it'll seep out you do want it to go out just a wee bit it's supposed to look like a poured mold anyway so now I'm just using a bamboo skewer to work out any air bubbles that I might see and then just trying to fill it up using a popsicle stick to get any of the extra out so that actually was the perfect ratio to fill up this Yet again, I'm just going around looking to see if I see any air bubbles. The hardest part of this whole project is keeping it in the upright position. But what I ended up doing at the top of the bunny is opening up one of the clips that kind of gave it a area, a flat area. And then I found whatever containers I had that it actually fit so it could stay in that upright position as it cured. So, yep, this is a little bit on the messy side, but I ended up having three molds that I purchased. They were really $3 a piece, so that I definitely can reuse those. And one thing about plaster of Paris, I need to let you know, do not rinse any of it down your sink. It will cause your, cause your pipes to clog. So make sure if you have any excess that you throw it in the trash. I probably let these sit in the molds themselves for probably six hours. You can kind of feel as it's curing, it's hot, not like hot to the touch where it's going to burn you, but there's a warm sensation. Now for these to completely dry before we can move on to painting them, they, they do take about three days. You can definitely feel the coldness as they're drying. It means that there's still moisture there.
My motivation for this project is when I went to all those antique stores and the very first one had those lamb and the bunny molds, those old antique ones. So a personal preference on how much of the outer edge you want to leave. I want mine to be a, just a little bit closer just because I know plaster of Paris might be a little bit on the fragile side. So I'm just using a sharp knife just to kind of trim the edge. I don't want it to com be completely smooth. I want you to know that it was two parts put together. And then after I let them cure for three days, my bottoms weren't quite as flat as I wanted them to be. So I'm just using our drum sander to sand that bottom a little bit smooth. You can do the same thing with sandpaper if you want, but you know, my husband's a tool guy, so we have the tools, so why not? Even though I looked for air bubbles, I still had a few little holes left behind from them. So I'm just taking some wood filler, if you have some spackle, whatever you have on hand, if you feel the need to fill those holes in. I actually already painted my bunny's bottom, so I am actually using the Dixie Bell's cocoa bean to make these ones look like they are chocolate. And then to make some old metal ones, I'm using Waverly Steel chalk paint. After my paint is dry, I'm going to go ahead and just seal these in using a clear coat by Rust-Oleum. Since this is chalk paint and I want my paint to stay. Now to give these bunnies just a little bit more of a metal look, I have this wax that I purchased off Amazon, which I use a lot of this. And it is a silver in color, so I'm just using a dollar store stenciling brush just to apply it just letting it hit those raised edges bringing out that detail that's definitely going to give it a little bit more of that metal look for my chocolate bunnies i have a little bit of the waverly white wax and a little bit of the verithane clear wax and i'm going to mix the two together just to give it that powdered look like they would have on the outside of a chocolate bunny or you could leave them as is if you wanted to to my local dollar store looking for some larger styrofoam eggs <sighs> nope they were all out of them but i did find these cute little styrofoam bunnies and i remembered that i had these smaller eggs in my stash that i had thrifted a little while ago the bunnies are just going to be a bonus to this video so i'm just taking a sharp knife and cutting off that bottom so these will stand up just like my previous project of the molds bunnies i'm going to make half of these chocolate and half of these metal this project is all about giving these little eggs some ears, just some wired ears. So I have some floral wire that is brown, and all I'm doing is cutting it size appropriate. That's why I really would like a bigger little styrofoam egg, but all I'm doing is cutting a piece, folding it in half, giving it that bunny ear type of look. And yeah, all we're gonna do is stick it in the top of that styrofoam egg. And then for my metal eggs uh, that I put that same silver wax on to make them look more metal, I just have some regular old wire that is bendable that is in the silver of color to match. And I did, did seal all these in with a clear coat before putting on their little ears. And now I have these little wooden balls and I'm gonna go ahead and give the little egg a little bit of a little boy tail. And then I'm also going to glue one of those wood pieces onto the bottom only because these were so lightweight and when I went to spray it with the clear coat, I blew them all over. So that'll just give it a little bit more weight. I think the bigger ones wouldn't have been Maybe I've stayed a little bit, but I can see decorating a table up in your place setting with these little critters. Yeah. 
Yep, you see socks. Socks and bean. Yes, we're going to be making some sock bunnies. This is as crafty as it gets. I just happened to stumble across these knee socks on a clearance rack at Walmart. And I remember making sock snowman as a 4-H project with our 4-H group. And I thought, oh my gosh, let's see if we can create a bunny using these socks. Beans will be used to weight the bottom of the sock and then polyfill for the rest. And I can't pass up polyfill when I see it at the thrift store. So that is a thrifted bag. So now I need to fill my sock and that's not always the easiest of tasks. So I cut off the bottom of a solo cup kind of to make a funnel. So it's a little bit larger of a hole for a funnel because the beans would get stuck in a funnel. So now the fun part of sticking it in the sock pushing my hand down there, just have something to help fill some of the beans in the bottom. Now, unlike a snowman that would have three separate balls, I want my bunny to be long, so I'm not gonna tie above those beans at all. I'm just gonna start poly filling, and I'm actually gonna work my way up with the poly fill, trying to make it so it's smooth and not too many lumps to the heel of the sock. I'm going to use the heel as the bunny's face, kind of like where the heel points out. That will be where the bunny's nose will be. And then when I got that polyfill all nice and packed in there, and I think I have it where I want it to be, I'll fluff it around a little bit. And now I'm going to take a string and I'm going to tie off right above the bunny's head. This will be where his flappy ears are going to be. And then to make the floppy ears, all I'm doing is finding my center point and cutting right down the middle of the top of those socks. Then to make the tip of the ear just a little bit pointy, I'm just taking out that sharp corner. And now that we have the two adorable looking ears, we're gonna go to the Cricut and I'm going to Cricut out with some felt, a face for our bunny. I didn't really like the bunny's eyes closed, so I thought they should be open, so I just went onto the shape feature. I have some ovals that I made for the eyes and then I ended up doing a little bit of circles to go in the eyes. And now I'm just taking this image. I want the little nose and those little whiskers and that little mouth. Now to cut felt, I am using a rotary blade. It is a blade that you change out with your regular cutting blade. Now I can say when you go to make really small little objects like the nose and the eyes and especially the whiskers, um, it was, I had a little bit of difficulty, but we worked through it, so that's why you didn't get a lot of video. We just wanted to make a cute little face for the bunny. But to add a little bunny tail, I just picked up these palms from Walmart in their craft section. They're just little white palms. I'm sure you could use cotton balls also, but just to have something on the bunny's butt. And then I just wanted to add one more level. I just... These are so super cute. Oh my gosh. I can so see making these with the kids at church. Oh my gosh. So anyway, yep, we're just doing some ribbon now. Yeah, we got to put the bunny's ears up in some ribbon. And I thought the ribbon is wild and it would definitely help flop out the ears just a little bit more. But this has to be the cutest project I have ever done. Project. This is the supplies that I think I'm going to use. I'm going to attempt for the first time to ever make gnomes. Now I saw these cute little garland gnome bunnies on Pinterest or TikTok. I can't re always remember, but I'm like, hmm, I wonder how they made those. So the ones from the garland were similar to the hats that I had made at Christmas time. So I actually had these supplies laying around left over from the Christmas season. So it's always good to use stuff up. So now that I have my piece of cardboard paper towel roll cut, I need to cut some strings to make the yarn for the hat. So yep, I'm just grabbing my nearest book, which is my small little Bible, and then wrapping it around many a times, probably 50, 60 times to get all the strings that it's going to take to fill this hat. You can always cut more or have leftovers. So now all I did was slide it off of the Bible and cut it in half. So now I have my strings for my hat. 
I need to cut off a little piece of the paper towel roll. I would say it's, I don't know, a quarter of an inch thick. So all I'm doing now is I'm going to start putting together the hat. So I'm going to put the string, fold it in half, and then put it under, and then put it through. So fold it in half, put one side through the loop, put the other two ends through, and then pull it tight. So I'm just going to work around this little hat, doing it a whole bunch of times, just making little knots as I pull it through. Now I don't want to be able to see any of the cardboard and I'm actually going to use a lot of this yarn for extra hair on my bunny so I want to make sure that it's nice and full. So now to keep my top nice and full, all I did was put a couple cotton balls in there. I'm trying to keep all the yarn going the same way, not kind of a mess. We want to have it all kind of laid out nice. And so I'm taking another piece of string and double knotting it and tying off. And this, is, like I said, was going to be hair. So I'm not going to cut it off like I did when I did the little hats at Christmas time. Now I need to do some more yarn. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it around my little Bible again. And this is going to be the gnome's head and beard. So now after I got them cut in half, now I'm going to keep it together like this. I'm still going to kind of work out, work and making sure my yarn is going the same way. Now I'm going to take another piece of string towards the top and I'm going to make another double knot because the little round part where I didn't cut is going to be the head and that's going to stick inside the hat and the rest is going to be his beard. Now to prevent the body or the head or the beard <laughs> coming out of the hat i'm going to use a little bit of hot glue around the cotton ball and the sides of the hat and then proceed to stuff all that little rounded part that i tied up to all the way into the hat now that i have that stuffed in i have a little wooden bead <laughs> and yes my little wooden beads do have holes in it so we'll call them nostrils on the side so a little bit of hot glue I'm um, gluing it onto underneath the hat and into the beard so it looks like that little gnome's nose is poking out. Now I do find that there's many things that people use to make the body to make their little gnomes sit upright. But since we're in the season of carrot patches and bunny rabbits, I thought it was perfect to do these little terracotta pots that I had thrifted. Yes, I love that. I usually never pass up a terracotta pot if I see it out thrifting. So I'm going to put some glue on there, try to find the center point and have his little hair, his little beard draping over. And I think this one actually, I, I'm going to make a family of four. I'm going to call her the mom. Now, there's a couple different ways you can make the hats. So this one I I did the opposite the way that I tied them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push all my yarn through the little hat and this is going to make the head smaller. So these are going to be the children gnomes. So yes this will make your hat a little bit smaller if you tuck all that yarn in there. Now to make my little gnomes look like bunnies, I went to my Cricut and I found an image where I could take apart and have ears. So that's what I'm doing. I actually have some white felt and some pink felt and I'm gonna be cutting out some bunny ears using my Cricut. You could definitely cut these out by hand, but I know as small as I need to make these, it's nice to have a Cricut. So once I found my image, I just need to start detaching and deleting the, the items on the image that I do not want. So they have a contour feature where I can go in and hide those. To cut fabric like the felt that I want to cut, I need to use a rotary blade. So I just need to change out my regular cutting blade to this.
Now all I have to do is glue my little ears together and glue them and decide where I want them to be glued on the little gnome's heads. So I stumbled across these bunny butts stealing from a carrot patch and I'm like oh my gosh I have to create some of these for you all so I actually ran across these terracotta pots I never pass those up when I see them in a thrift store so I picked out some yarn and then I have some odds and ends to create this project and who doesn't love the Dollar Tree carrots the first we need to start with creating a big palm for the bunny's bottom. So I am just using my small uh, holy Bible. Yes, I am. It's appropriate for Easter. So as my measuring, and I do a lot. So, yep, I'm going to wrap this around a whole bunch of times, probably like 60 times because I want his little bottom to be very full. And then I'm going to go ahead and slide it off the Bible. And then I'm going to tie it in the middle so take another piece of that yarn find your middle point and then tie a knot now next we're going to take the scissors we're going to find where the tops they fold over and we're going to cut those strings we're going to give my yarn a little bit of a haircut making a rounded shape We're going to go ahead and build our pumpkin patch. So I just have some Dollar Tree floral foam. Do they now call it a dollar and a quarter store? Just asking. But I already had this foam. So just going to cut it off to stick in the bottom to fill up this pot. And so that it looks like dirt, I'm just using some brown crinkle paper. You could use Spanish moss too, whatever you have. I just happen to have this brown crinkle paper on hand. I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue on the bunny and I'm kind of going to try to find the center point. I'm going to have him half kind of like he's jumping in, falling out, hanging over the pot. I want to lift him up just a little bit so I just stick, sticking an extra piece of that floral foam underneath him. Now to give the bunny a tail, I just have a regular palm that I bought in a package of white ones. I used my Cricut to cut out some feet for the bunny and I just found this image. Look how appropriate this is. And as you're watching this video, you see that I cut out multiple pieces at the same time. So yes, I am just going to be using the bunny's feet. So when I put all those into that program to cut with the whites and the pinks, it actually let me, in the process, change my mat out and then proceeded to cut the little pink parts. So that was nice. I wish I was more of an, a cricket expert to explain it to you all. A lot of times I'm surprised that it actually works out. Then to stick my carrots in, I'm just going to hot glue the tip and I'm going to push it down. That hot glue is hot enough to melt that floral foam just a little bit so they'll stay in the upright position. So I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. Yep, right from a sock, <laughs> a sock bunny. Oh my gosh, those were still too cute. You know, to the simple of just painting over Dollar Tree items and creating something out of that. And I know the molds, the candy molds were a little bit up there, um, but really they're not hard at all. And then painting them, the most of that craft was just taking your time, waiting for it to dry. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, guys. And let me know. Oh, yes, I forgot about the bunny butts. Oh, my gosh. Those bunny butts were so cute. Oh, yeah. Oh, bunny butts and little gnomes. And oh, my goodness. Yeah, I could just go on. I just had 
way too much fun making these crafts. <laughs> but sometimes you just got to stop and say, okay, it's enough, enough. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. Don't forget to give me a like and a kind compliment or a comment if you are going to try some of these or if you've already done these in the past. So, And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to. Bye!